XP is vital to progressing in Minecraft, but it can be difficult to get a lot of it early game. So in this video, I'll show you how to build a mob spawner experience farm. So easy, you can build it with stone tools and can even AFK at it. Let's check it out. Now the first thing you have to do, of course, is actually find the mob spawner. Now unfortunately, there's no working seed finder for mob spawners in 1.18 Minecraft. However, they are pretty common to find. Uh, generally, I would say you find them the most when you're caving, and you happen to see one intersecting a cave. Now you could do this with a spider spawner, but I would only really suggest doing it with skeleton or zombie, as it's basically impossible to have the spiders not go up the walls, and have most of the spiders not actually go into the killing chamber. So once you've found a spawner, simply place one torch on top of it just like this. There's no need in 1.18 to put a torch on every single side. You now only have to put a torch on the top. Then of course you can look in the loot chests and get whatever kind of treasure from there you want to. And you'd want to get rid of these to clear out the area. And generally there can be some very good stuff in these mob spawner loot chests, including things like the new other side music disc. But we aren't going to need any of the items from those chests today. We actually just need some ladders, it could be this many, it could be less, depending on how deep your mob spawner is, a singular slab of any type. You can have up to three hoppers, but you only need one for the design, in fact you don't even need one, but it really makes it better. You want about eight chests, but again you can do this with less. You want a normal campfire, but a soul campfire is better if you've already gone to the nether. And you want two buckets of water, as well as a pickaxe and a shovel. Now these certainly do not have to be the best netherite pickaxes like this. In fact I would suggest to make this farm early game, and you could make this with even stone or iron pickaxes and shovels. It doesn't have to be good stuff at all. So now that you have the items, the first step is to mine four blocks in every direction from the spawner. So from the spawner, count out one, two, three, four, just like this, every single direction. And we'll do that this way as well, and we'll do that here as well. So one, two, three, four, there, and one, two, three, four, there. We're going to basically make a square out of this by mining out all these blocks around here. And this is going to be utilizing the maximum amount of room that mobs can spawn in. An interesting bit of trivia is that mob spawners actually only spawn mobs in a 9x3 radius around them. But for this farm design, we're going to mine out a 9x4 radius because the too tall height of the skeletons and zombies makes it so that if they spawn in on the top half of one of those blocks they could spawn in on, then they could actually fail their spawning. So for this type of spawner, you do want the four blocks high. So we're going to mine these blocks here. So now that we've mined out this 9x9 area, we're also going to mine two blocks beneath it like this, just all the way around here, and this will give us room to put down our water. We've mined out the cobblestone, and we'll now mine out the deep slate underneath it. We now have this area cleared out, and if you have an exposed side, you will want to fill that in so that the mobs cannot escape out of that area, and maybe if there's light over here, that light wouldn't travel through there either. So we'll just fill all of this up here, and that'll make that so it's completely filled, so there's no edge that isn't kind of completely closed in by some blocks. And so it'll be two blocks above the spawner here, so this block, then this block. So we'll mine out this around here as well. So that'll be two blocks of air above the spawner, of course the one block where the spawner is, and two blocks beneath the spawner as well. That'll leave us this area above the spawner here that we can fill in with blocks if we want, or you can just keep it empty, it doesn't actually affect the farm whatsoever. And now that this area is completely mined out, we can put down our water. You're going to want to start by making a small infinite water source anywhere here you want. We can just make it over here, it doesn't really matter where it is. And the easiest way of doing this is just having three blocks in a row, putting one water on that side and one water on that side, and filling up your water in the middle here. You could technically even make this farm with one water bucket, as long as you could move your bucket down here again to put down the second water block. Now on any side of the farm, start placing down water in a row, so you can place it every other block like this, because the block in between two of those will fill itself up. So like this is a full block here, this is a flowing block. If we put water here, this will fill up to be a water source as well. So we can do that all the way along here like this, and we can even pick up from the water sources along here to fill it up all the way. Now we have all of our water going this way. Also, it looks like this isn't flowing correctly because it's going into here. So you can simply pick up the water from this pool here and fill it in like this. And that should make that flow all the way here correctly. But if it's not like it is here, you can just block it up a bit, then break the blocks again to sort of reset where the water is going, and it should flow correctly then. Now on this row of blocks right here, mine it down one block all the way over here to the very edge, and place down a water bucket on this side, although it could be the other side, but we'll do it here. 
We now have a pattern where no matter where the skeletons or zombies spawn, they will all be pushed to the very corner here. Now mine one block down here and start mining this way over two blocks. We've mined down here, two blocks here. We're going to place down our last water bucket right here. And then we're going to start mining this direction. So it's basically parallel to this tunnel. So it goes down one over here and we'll have it go here. And we'll keep mining down this parallel tunnel right here. Looks like I actually found some diamonds there. So if you're making this in a deep slate layer or a layer with diamonds, maybe you can get lucky as well. We want to stop mining when we have one block where the water isn't flowing to. So that would be right here. And we want to dig down four blocks. So we're going to dig down one, two, three, four. Then from this point, we're going to start building the area where we're going to be as we kill the skeletons or the zombies. You want to get out your chest and your hoppers here, as well as your ladders. Now you can use a soul campfire or a campfire. Soul campfires kill things twice as quickly, but a campfire can work just as well. Now from this point, you want to mine this block here and mine this block here and put a chest starting right here. So the chest is facing something like that. Now we'll start to mine out a little space around here to be like our little area to be killing the skeletons from. It looks like I found some more diamonds. All right, we'll put a hopper into this chest here. Again, that gives us three blocks of air from right there. So the water stops right here and then it goes down one, two, three down to this hopper here. But of course we mine down four to place the hopper. We'll place our campfire or soul campfire on top of here. Then we can put in maybe a stair here if you want, but it doesn't actually matter. We can mine this out here and make this a double chest. What I would suggest is to mine down a couple more blocks so we can go down two more and then three more like this and put in a couple more chests here because with those chests if we decide to AFK here for a very long time then we don't have to worry about let's say all the drops not being picked up. Then place a block here so you have a place to stand. This will be where you stand to kill the mobs. Now go into this corner here and mine straight up. The reason for this is now you have easy access to your spider spawner farm or your skeleton or zombie spawner farm. And we'll continue to mine all the way up here, placing down ladders to give us a great access point to this spawner farm. And I would certainly suggest bringing a lot of ladders with you, as depending on how deep down your mob spawner is, you may have to place a lot of these to actually have a easy access point down to there. We've made it to the surface here, and something you could do if you want is grab some more water while you're up here and then make yourself a drop down chute to go down to the bottom of this area very quickly. But of course that's up to you. The farm is now almost done. To simply finish it up, go 10 blocks up your ladder. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then right here at the 10th block, mine that, as well as the one above it, the 11th block, and mine these all the way over here. So you kind of pop out here at the experience farm and put some deep slate leading over to the XP spawner right here. And once we break this torch, and you can't actually see it very well because I have the night vision on, let me grab this handy milk right here and drink it, then you can see the actual light level around here. You can see here this torch is lighting up this entire area here, because in the 1.18 update of Minecraft, the torches will now spawn proof to the very edge of their light radius, as mobs will only spawn at light level 0, and not at light level 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So because of that, you want to have even less light inside of these mob spawners as there previously would have been. Alright, so the second we break this, mobs are going to begin to spawn. So we want to start by being prepared with our spruce slab, in fact a slab of any type. So the second you break this, a mob will probably spawn. What we're going to do is we're going to break it. We're going to place down a slab on top of there. We're then going to break these blocks right here, like this. Then we're going to place blocks right here to seal it up. And now our farm is done. And if we go all the way down here, and we basically wait a little bit, the mob spawner will start working. Now a little bit of info on how mob spawners work. They will only be active and have mobs spawn at them if you're within 16 blocks of the spawner. So if you want to have a farm like this that incorporates multiple mob spawners, you can do that. Just simply have the water paths flow into each other, but they have to be within 16 blocks of the player. So you could have two mob spawners that are let's say 30 blocks away from each other, but they're both within 15 blocks of you. That's fine. So for instance in this farm here it wouldn't let's say work if we went all the way up the ladder, but if we stay down here it works very well. So this farm has no need to switch between automatic and AFK, it has both modes at the exact same time. This campfire here will kill all the mobs, but their drops will still go into the chests. Now when the skeletons spawn in, or the zombies, they'll fall down here, and then you can hit them once they get all the way down here to the campfire, which can take a little bit of time, but if you see some mobs kind of clogging up, that's completely fine as they'll continue to push themselves until eventually they'll fall down here. 
And once they fall down, simply hit them with your sword, and because you hit them, then they will drop the experience. So we can just hit them like this, and we can get the experience from these mobs here. There's no need to worry, because the campfire here will slowly kill them. Now if you don't want to have the campfire here, you can always get rid of it, the farm will work just as well. But something you can do if you get rid of the campfire is you can put some slabs up here, that'll make it so that the mobs don't get you. You could even put the campfire in maybe a chest nearby, but I like to have the campfire here because I can hit these mobs at the exact same time as they're getting killed. Their drops are automatically picked up, and let's say I'm done with hitting the mobs here, but I still want some bones and some arrows. All I have to do is literally just mine to the wall a little bit, place some blocks in front of me like this, and just AFK in here for as long as I want to, and the mob farm will continue to work as long as I'm within 16 blocks of the spawner. In fact, this is the perfect farm for multiplayer servers, as this will continue to work even if the mob cap is completely filled, as there can only be 120 hostile mobs in one world, and if there's more than that number, then no more will spawn in, but they will spawn in from a mob spawner, so you can use this farm to get yourself experience, and kill a bunch of skeletons in the process. Also, you may want to place a torch in this room here, so it's nice and bright. Now I've just converted this to the version that does not use the campfire, and you can see I simply placed two slabs right here, and just the skeleton legs are visible. We can then grab our sword and hit these, and have 100% chance of getting the XP from the skeletons. Also, technically this works for AFKing as well, as the mobs would pile up here in Entity Cram, but then they can also despawn, so it's probably best to have the campfire there if you want to be able to AFK at this farm. Anyway, that's a make an XP farm out of a skeleton spawner. Goodbye!